see what happens when people lose all their money in their bank accounts and like that. People say, my God, where can I put my money? Oh, gold and silver. Oh, too bad. Can't find it anymore. Because yeah. in a matter of days, when you see that kind of demand, it would it would bleed dry the entire industry. And I'm telling you mathematically, economically, and sprinkling of real old school logic, the wolf is coming. Don't know when or how, but if you're not already in position, you got about 30 seconds to do so. And the exchange is being bled dry. It's that the public hasn't been shaken up yet enough to realize that the banks aren't safe, the brokerages aren't safe, that traditional investments need to be reevaluated. Even the best yeah. laid plans need to be reevaluated. That 60-40 split, How's that working out for you right now, where the 10-year treasury has lost 50% of its value? In today's news recap, silver flat as subsiding inflation bolsters Fed cut case. Spot silver was little changed at the start of the week as subsiding inflation in the U.S. added to prospects that the Federal Reserve would deliver a rate cut later this year. Data showed last Friday that annual core PCE inflation had eased to 2.6 percent in May from 2.8 percent in April while coming in line with market consensus. It has been the lowest rate since March 2020. The latest U.S. inflation data remained fresh on investors' mind, with the data coming in line with consensus and generally did little to sway current market rate expectations for the Fed's easing process to kickstart in September. IG market strategist Yip Jun Rong was quoted as saying by Reuters, markets are now pricing in about a 63 percent chance of a Fed rate cut occurring in September, according to the CME FedWatch tool. Lower interest rates reduce the opportunity cost of holding silver, which pays no interest. Market players will next be paying close attention to remarks from Fed Chair Jerome Powell on Tuesday and to the minutes from the Federal Reserve's most recent policy meeting due out on Wednesday. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview, but first make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. Enjoy the episode. Just direct the public. That's all you gotta do. Like I often say, I live in a neighborhood where the guy across the street from me is one of the biggest money managers in Florida. He's in the Forbes top 50 list. And the only time he ever asked me about gold and silver is when the price is down. And yeah. oh. and and he wouldn't know a gold eagle if it fell on his foot. Now this is a guy yeah. that manages $4 billion, $4 billion. Uh, the public has no idea what's coming. And the recency bias and the normalcy bias that, you know, look, if you've been a broker over the past, you know, 20, 30 years, you've lived through nothing but boom time, where since 1982, interest rates have gone straight down until just recently, making selling equities and bonds a very, very lucrative deal and, and one where you have a very good chance of doing well by your customers. Let's see what happens when interest rates massively go the other direction. And I think there'll be a very big problem. So you have the majority of this country asleep at the wheel. You have the majority of this country not owning any physical precious metals. And you see, again, deficit after deficit after deficit. You see supply dwindling off the exchanges. And the one thing that's really strange about all of this is that right now the retail and wholesale industry is flush with product and premiums are as low as they've been in four years. I look at that as bottoming out. This cannot last when you see deficit after deficit after deficit and the exchanges being bled dry. It's that the public hasn't been shaken up yet enough to realize that the banks aren't safe, the brokerages aren't safe, that traditional investments need to be reevaluated. Even the best yeah. laid plans need to be reevaluated. That 60 40 split, how's that working out for you right now, where the 10 year treasury? has lost 50% of its value over the last couple of years. And, you know, where the equity markets have, have done not a whole lot unless you're in the top seven stocks that are holding up the entire indice. So, you know, I just think the bottom line is this is getting real. And I think people need yeah. to understand when you see United Arab Emirates stop taking dollars for oil, we are this close to the shit hitting the fan. And then when it happens and it breaks the fragile banking system, which is massively massively over leveraged and under capitalized and all of a sudden rates spike and you see banks fall one by one by one by one and the bail-ins that no one knows about google bail-in google the dodd frank act and see what happens when people lose all their money in their bank accounts and like that people say my god where can i put my money oh gold and silver oh too bad 
can't find it anymore. Because yeah. in a matter of days, when you see that kind of demand, it would it would bleed dry the entire industry and that people, right now is very flush. In today's episode, Andy Schechtman, an expert in the precious metals market, talks about the recent news of how China has been buying gold and silver at record pace for the past 20 months. Smart money has been hammering the price differences between the COMEX paper markets and the actual physical market to their advantage. By doing this, China is building up its reserves of gold and silver, which are becoming more valuable as the global economy faces uncertainties. Recently, Saudi Arabia's move to work with China goes beyond digital currency projects. By moving away from the U.S. dollar, Saudi Arabia is aligning itself with a more diverse financial world. This reduces the dollar's dominance and gives countries like China more economic power. This shift highlights the declining influence of the U.S. in global energy markets and the rise of new economic powers. Sheckman's views point to an important reality. The global financial landscape is changing fast. China's large purchases of precious metals and Saudi Arabia's strategic decisions show a big shift in economic power. These changes reveal weaknesses in the U.S.-centered financial system and suggest a future where various currencies and commodities play key roles in global trade. Now, we'll show you the best clips of the latest Sheckman interview, but first, smash the subscribe button, hit the like button if you like our recaps, and check our description for more info. Enjoy the episode. When this all started, um, my head trader called me up. And he said, um, things are getting crazy. Um, how long do you think we should go into the weekend? What he meant by that is, how many COMEX contracts should we buy at 5,000 ounces apiece so that we can sell product over the weekend? Because you could sense things yeah. were heating up yeah. and things were changing. And so I said, I don't know, how about 11? So he bought 11 COMEX contracts which meant that we were 55,000 ounces long, which means that anyone who wants, because the, the market closes on Friday night at 6 yeah. p.m. Eastern, yeah. and it sleeps until roughly 6 p.m. Yeah. Eastern on Sunday where it opens in Asia. That's the only time it's closed, that period. It's called the access market, yeah. where if you you can take orders, but you better be hedged if, if unless you're, if you're concerned that the price might open up higher. So, we buy 11 COMEX contracts into the weekend, having no idea what Silver Squeeze really is going to be. This is on a Friday. And um, so Friday night, I'm doing interviews with Wall Street Silver and with Arcadia Economics and David Morgan. And I mean, literally for 10 days straight, I worked 18, 20 hours a day, never left a room, never went outside. My kids hated me, except to go across the island to buy a house. And I'm working nonstop, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of phone calls and interviews. And it was just, I've never experienced anything like it to this day. Um, and so my head trader calls me up. Well, first of all, I get calls from people Friday night saying, do you see JM Bullion and Atmex are no longer taking any orders? They've stopped taking orders. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Um, my head trader calls me the next morning, Saturday morning at about 6.30 in the morning. And he says, dude, he says, you know, um, we bought 11 contracts yesterday, 55,000 ounces long. You sold 90,000 ounces last night. I you, are naked, <laughs> you are exposed <laughs> by 45,000 ounces oh, to the man. open price. And now it's man. Saturday and people are saying the price of silver is gonna gap up 20 bucks, whatever. Yeah. And I'm thinking, holy shit, we're 45,000 ounces exposed. Yeah. And that could bankrupt the company if it really gapped up, right? And luckily we were able to hedge it right away, but when it opened up, it opened up two bucks. It cost me over $90,000. And that's what happens when you sell more than you have hedged yeah. long. And so all of those companies, the reason they shut down was because they could not hedge the exposure into the unknown. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what will happen. We will wake up on a Monday morning to find the price gap way higher for whatever reason. Maybe it's OPEC dumping the dollar or whatever it may be. And it's a system that when I left Minnesota, not only would I have bet anyone in the world that I'm not going to not come back and, and sell my house immediately. I'm going on a vacation not to buy a new house, but it happened. 
But by the same token, I watched some of the biggest companies in America, myself included, stop taking business. We shut down on Saturday. I said, no more. Saturday and Sunday couldn't take any orders until it opened up and we could hedge our, our, our position and go long. But I'll tell you, that's how fast things change like that. And in one night, in one night, it overwhelmed the industry. Well, what happens if the shit really hits the fan this time? Yeah. In one night, the entire industry will sell out a product. Yeah. Because what you and I and the people listening to this show are, son, son in my face, we're the pimple on the elephant's ass. When the elephant, which being the public, says, oh my God, that bank just they failed, failed in. They lost everything. And they run to the safety of something like precious metals in your own possession. I'm telling you, and I mean this honest to God, in a period of 24 hours or less, it will bleed dry the entire industry. There's that much money out there. And uh, one really, really wealthy guy could could destroy the whole retail industry. In, in, they in did. They did. Look at the Hunt Brothers. <laughs> well, and you know something? Speaking of that, the Hunt Brothers realized that there were far more contracts issued than there were bars behind it. So do you know what the, the open interest delivery. is right now on the registered category? The registered category of COMEX are the bars that are held for delivery backing the contracts that are issued. It is rehypothecated 1,790%, call it 1,800%. That means one out of 18 get their silver, the rest gets force majeure cash sub. That close to the whole system blowing up. And you know, the little boy who cried wolf has been saying this forever. And I'm on the cover of the little boy who cried wolf, but the last page, the wolf comes. And I'm telling you mathematically, economically, and sprinkling of real old school logic, the wolf is coming. Don't know when or how, but if you're not already in position, you got about 30 seconds to do so. Yep. To put your head between your knees yep. and, and you know kiss your ass goodbye type of thing. Yep. Uh, I hope it doesn't happen that way. I'm sorry for using profanity. I, I shouldn't do that, but I'm very serious about this. And I want people to understand that um, this is this is a very serious event, which we just saw. Trying to help happens. people. If what do you think of Andy Schechtman's take? Will the East versus West war end up in a massive gold and silver price squeeze? Will the dollar collapse in 2025 as the BRICS nations take over? Share your honest opinion in the comments section down below. Send a super thanks if you find our recaps valuable and make sure you see this video right here because it's a perfect fit for you. I see you on the other side.